Hello everyone, I'm Sea Ranger Ray. And I'm Ranger Sophie. Welcome to another Sea Ranger adventure. You know, here at Sea Ranger's home base on Blue Lagoon Island, we're pretty lucky. We sure are. We get to be around dolphins, sea lions, and so much natural beauty everywhere. Yeah, but unfortunately, even at our headquarters, we have noticed some things over the years that can be bad for the environment. Like many other Bahamians, when we were developing our headquarters, we planted lots of trees and plants to make our island much more beautiful. Unfortunately, we just realized that some of the plants we put down, well, they're sort of bad for the environment. In fact, they fall in the category we call invasive species. Explorers, you may be wondering what exactly makes something an invasive species. Oh, I know that. An invasive species is any plant or animal that is bad for the environment. <laughs> so, how can an animal or plant be bad? Well, because they tend to spread quickly and outcompete our native species for resources. And add to that, they actually establish themselves as a dominant species, causing damage, lots of money to remove. So they actually are pretty bad. Hmm. So explorers, today we're going to show you some of these species and point out some solutions that we can all do to help protect our environment. So let's get started. Come on. Explorers. The first lion thief we're going to tell you about is a tree that growing up, even I thought was native. Can you guess its name? Well, if you said Casarino or Australian Pine, that's right. But I ain't gonna lie though. On a hot day, I love chilling under a big Casarino to cool out. So they can't be that bad, right? Well, yes, they can. These thieves were imported in this country around the 1920s to be used as a hedge tree. But casuarinas are extremely dangerous because they actually release toxins into the soil which stop any other tree from growing in that area. And if that wasn't bad enough, the nettles which they produce can actually stop other plants from growing up by blocking out sunlight. You mean like those yummy ones like sea grapes and cocoa plums? <laughs> yeah, especially those. Don't forget. Being invasive as they spread, native plants and trees are lost along with animals and birds that normally depend on these things for food and shelter. Casarinas are also bad for the environment because they have very shallow root systems. That would mean that they are one of the first trees to topple during hurricanes causing serious damage to power lines, homes and roads. I've even seen in coastal areas the shallow roots of these trees failing to trap the sand on the beach, increasing beach erosion and habitat loss. Explorers, these trees are bad. They poison the ground for the plants, they break up the soil, giving us erosion, and you know what else? When they fall down, they destroy our properties. I see why we need to get rid of them. The next lion pirate is called the scovola plant. It is also known as the Hawaiian sea grape or white inkberry. With its lush green leaves and quick growth rate, this invader is a very popular plant for landscaping. Hold up. I know that tree. Are you sure it's not native? It's everywhere. <laughs> well, Ranger Sophie, there is a native scovola tree known as the black ink berry. Unlike the invader, it has black fruits and the imposter has white berries and much thinner leaves. Oh, that explains why I was so confused. I've noticed as the invasive scavola spreads, it creates thickets along our coastlines, outcompeting and killing our native plants such as sea oats, sea lavender, black ink berry, mangroves, and numerous other plants and animals in our country. Yes, Ranger Sophie, without these native plants to stabilize the beach and prevent erosion, there is no telling the effect it may have on our native Bahamian wildlife, such as birds, crabs, lizards, and even our fish nurseries. If not removed, the Hawaiian sea grape may take over our mangroves and our wetlands. Well, that would be bad since mangroves are important habitats for birds, juvenile counts, lobsters, and fishes like grouper and snappers. You know what, explorers? Here at HQ, we have reclaimed lots of land back from the Scavola thief, planting in its place buttonwood, sea grape, and by the ocean, sea oats. Those native plants actually hold the soil and protect the beach while providing food for our native animals. You know, Ranger Sophie, the next thief actually lives over there in the ocean. 
Let's go over there and tell the explorers a little bit about him. Come on. The only good thing about all those invasives is that they're stuck on land and at least some of them are in the ocean. Well, not really, Ranger Sophie. You're forgetting the newest member of the bunch, the pirate, otherwise known as the lionfish. This marine newcomer is native to the Indian and South Pacific Ocean, which is thousands of miles away. Unfortunately, it has established itself quickly and is now so dominant that it threatens our most productive marine ecosystems. Whoa. This fish wears a clever disguise of elegant camouflage fins and pretends to be beautiful and non-threatening while taking over and invading our mangroves, our reefs, our shorelines, and even our blue holes, killing and eating many ecologically important marine species. Wow. Right. I read the lionfish was first introduced to the Western Atlantic as a likely result of the aquarium trade. Ocean currents have helped this invader spread from north and southeastern coasts of the United States to Bermuda, throughout the entire Bahamas, and now the Caribbean Basin. Explorers, the lionfish, venomous dorsal, pelvic, and anal spines are harmful to divers, snorkelers, and fishermen. Evidence found in their stomach contents have revealed that lionfish are feeding on a variety of small fish, crustaceans, including baby shrimps, crabs, and even groupers and snappers. By consuming young animals in the food chain before they have a chance to mature, and by competing with fish like Nassau Kuba for food, the lionfish packs a double punch on destroying the delicate balance within our reef community. I just found out that the Invasive Alien Species, or IAS, project is focusing on controlling lionfish populations. Aside from a removal experiment, they're campaigning for the public to eat lionfish as a means of controlling their numbers. <laughs> well, I certainly agree. The best way to get rid of lionfish is to eat them. The venom is only found in the spawn explorers, so the meat of the lionfish is safe to eat and real tasty, I might add. Many people confuse lionfish as poisonous rather than venomous, but the venom can only affect you if injected directly into the bloodstream from the spine. Once you're careful not to be stuck by the spines when catching and cleaning the fish, they make a yummy, excellent meal. So remember to always hold it by the head, and once the spines are removed, it's safe to handle it like any other fish. So explorers, I know you're wondering, what should you do if you were to ever get stuck? <laughs> oh, well you know what, that's pretty easy. It's recommended that you clean the wound to make sure none of the spines are still inside, then run hot water over it, as hot as you can bear. If the swelling or pain persists, take a painkiller and of course, go see a doctor. Oh, that's not so bad. Sounds a lot less dangerous than barracuda or rockfish poisoning. You know, I've had lionfish before and it sure is yummy. <laughs> they sure are, Ranger Sophie. And as soon as we get done looking for the lionfish, we're gonna head to Nassau to find two other invasive species the Melaleuca and the Brazilian pepper. Hi there, explorers. You know, one of the things that is so bad about invasives is that they grow everywhere. And in the Bahamas, some of our most productive wetlands are right in there by the roads. That's true. And another sneaky one is the Melaleuca tree, which is another native of Australia that has appeared in the Bahamas in recent times, but is not yet widespread. Yeah, but they were introduced in Florida to drive areas of the Everglades because they can absorb and hold lots of water. In Florida, the Melaleuca is a pest, growing in dense forests that eliminate all other vegetation, creating a bad habitat for native plants and animals. Whoa, now that sounds scary. I bet you explorers are wondering what it looks like. Well, here is one. This tree can actually grow to be 80 feet tall. It has a white papery bark and has lots of seeds that can be dispersed by the wind or water. They grow in dry or wetland areas and pose a major threat to our wetland areas because of the water availability. And explorers, what do you think would happen if the Melaleuca tree starts growing in our pine forests or well fields? Well, Rinda Sophie, that would be terrible because they can easily drink some of the water, turning our forests into deserts and drying out our precious well fields. Wow, we definitely need to keep them out of the Bahamas and get rid of the ones that we have here already. Yeah. The next criminal is the Brazilian pepper, which is a medium-sized evergreen shrub-like tree native to Brazil and Paraguay. This tree grows rapidly, reaching heights of 15 to 30 feet. Brazil? That means that they're from South America. They really 
sneak from far. <laughs> yup, typically Brazilian pepper trees form dense forests that keep with all other plant life by producing a dense close network of trees. These forests are considered to be a poor habitat for native wildlife species and may negatively affect our bird populations. Don't forget that as a relative to poison wood, poison oak, and poison ivy, this tree produces dense clusters of small berries reported to produce a narcotic or toxic effect on native birds and wildlife during certain parts of the year. Uh, what about us? Because of its relationship to poison ivy, many who come into contact with the sap develop an allergic reaction, like itchy skins and blotches. Ooh. Getting rid of invasives is pretty hard work. Prevention is definitely the best cause of action. By becoming aware of what the species looks like and how they spread, we can make better choices in types of plants to grow and spread in our yard. Man, that's right, Stranger Sophie. The government of Bahamas has asked all Bahamas to register plants and native trees on their property as a part of our goal of planting one million trees locally, growing fruits and vegetables in our gardens, and asking our local nurseries to only have native plants for sale is a great start. Yeah, but we really should also eradicate any and all invasives whenever possible. When we uproot and destroy these thieves, we can limit how fast they spread and hopefully save some native organisms. You're right, Sir Ranger Sophie. The Bahamas is a beautiful country, and if invasive species continue to spread and destroy our environment, soon everything that's unique and special about the Bahamas may be lost. These invasives are destructive to native ecosystems, human health, and ultimately all life within the Bahamas, and must be found remove and destroy by all reasonable means. That is your job. Tell your friends and family and spread the word. Let's save our native plants and animals and let's save our country. Right, and always remember to keep the Bahamas clean, green, and, and pristine. pristine. Thank you explorers for joining us on another Sea Ranger adventure. And for more information, please go to dolphinicarnage.com, brief.org, or bnt.bs. Bye. Bye.